And because of the hardware handshaking, it won't lose any characters. Or if it does, it may lose one out of every 100 K. It's not flawless. So I guess what I've done is, I've just been building upon this and I'd like to release another version soon and it's almost ready. But as I pretty much stated, I think I stated in the documentation, I'm not, right now I'm not going to worry about commercializing this as far as I'm concerned. There are enough other items out there that are there to generate monies. So this is something I do in my spare time. And as long as I receive feedback, I don't have any problem releasing it. So we've got a lot of spare time. Does that answer your question? Well, you know, you know, sort of. I guess I I guess I've been hung up on uh, you know what on the on the cable bit. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just going to make a make a new cable. But I was just wondering what lines uh, that were activated and whether that was built into the, uh, the TI-232. You know, evidently it didn't handle it before. Right. With the cable, with the cable pinouts that are supplied in the documentation, using a TI or let's see. Using any of the three cards should allow you to use port. There may need to be modification made to the MyArt card, depending on which version card you have. Uh, Jeff White, I believe, and Dan Iker uh, documented that in the Micropendium, maybe a year back. But if you like, I can show you that cable afterwards. And yeah, there's two cables, aren't there? There's, you know. There are two. There is one that Mike came up with, which requires a hardware modification to all cards. There's one that Jeff White and Dan Iker came up with, which requires no modification to the TI card, no modification to the Corecom card, and possibly, but possibly a modification <coughs> to the MyArt card. So, if you don't like to modify your cards, cable that Jeff White and Dan Iker came up with is best suited to your task. The, the, the uh, beta version of port that's available now and that doesn't have any of the um, updates yet? No, it does not. That's something I'd like to release. Uh, I had wanted to release the next version about two months after I released the beta, but I was sidetracked by Archiver, and after that I started doing some testing at work. I wasn't able to really get into the programming for port for a while. So in the past couple weeks I've been adding and modifying, and I'm almost ready to release another version. Anyone else? When will the dollar be uh, ready? Any thoughts? Dialer has some code in here already, but I'd like to have it released for the next version. But if that's going to hold it up, I will release it without and then release another version with the dialer. That seems to be one of the most useful parts of the program, is setting up a dollar directly. How many people use the dialer? Okay, just about everyone. Sure. <laughs> I guess what I don't want to say problem is, but when I first started using the terminal programs, didn't really have a dialer that I liked. I used to use mass transfer most of the time. So I got into the habit of actually memorizing all of the numbers I called <laughs> and the passwords, which I still do today. You're very young. So, yes, yes, I know. I, I'm just waiting for the... <laughs> 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 
perspective will change soon. Yeah. <laughs> Before we have it, it, it it <laughs> they're a replacement for our memory system that don't work so well. Okay. <laughs> That's the second thing to go. Well, in that case, I'll try and put the dialer in the next version. The dialer and the macro are very handy. <laughs> Will that be announced in micropending or someplace where most people can see? I would assume so. I thought the last. Uh, I thought the beta version of port was announced in Micropendium. That was. Okay. I know that Don has sent out a few copies to people. I gave him an archive of port beta release. And he has sent that out to a few people. It should be available for a couple of dollars from him. Or you can send a request to me. That's not a problem. Um, I downloaded mine off the uh, uh, Hub group. Yes. Uh, and in Chicago, I think, had it too. I usually will put the programs up on uh, Genie, and it will end up on Delphi. I usually upload it to the Chicago board, and then it seems to spread out from there. Um, beyond that, I really don't know how how far it actually spreads and how quickly. Sometimes it's relatively slow these days. Things used to get across from different ones rapidly, but yes. Unfortunate. Is it on Don's board? Is it on Don's board? I don't know. I haven't been on Don's board for a long time. I know he put it back up, but I haven't tried logging back in. I actually needed, he needed another copy of the bulletin board from me, and I had given him one a while back, but he he carefully filed it. <laughs> Put it in a safe place. And as we all know, safe places are hard to find again. Yes. Are there any other questions on port? Any other general questions you might have? MDOS or anything else? I noticed there was a lot of activity on the board about MDOS. That all had to do with stuff with this gin mod. Right. There's uh, the MDOS is now gen mod compatible. I added the changes necessary to bring up the SCSI MDOS to the level that 221 was at. I added a command for the P system. So uh, I believe that Jerry Coffee is putting together a package to be released for the P system. I added the well, PFM support for the flash disk. I added support for the RAVE RAM disk. You can use that on the Geneve now. A couple other items that 